Okay, so we're going to start with section 1.3 for our college prep math class, and it's going to be simplify square roots of numbers. So square roots, the inverse operation to squaring a number is to find its square roots. For example, finding a square root of 9 is equivalent to asking what number when squared equals 9? One obvious answer is 3, because 3 squared equals 9. However, negative 3 is also a square root of 9, because negative 3 squared equals 9. For now, we will focus on the principal square root, which is always taken to be non-negative. The symbol, I think there, the square root symbol, is called a radical sign. It is used to de denote, oh my goodness, I checked it all up. The symbol, called a radical sign, is used to denote the principal square root of a number. Therefore, the principal square root of 9 can be written as square root of 9. The expression square root of 64 represents the principal square root of 64. Alright, so basically just doing positive numbers with the square root. That's what you can do. Alright, so let's work through some of these. So dealing with this and taking in evaluating square roots. So if we have a square root of 81, some of y'all may see that right away, some of you may not. Again, the easiest thing to do is do a tree, okay? So with this, you can simply say, well, we'll do a tree, it goes down to the prime numbers, right? So we know that 9 times 9, and then we could break a 9 down. Right? Because the 9 is 3 times 3. And then because of the square root, there's an imaginary 2 right here. Here, I'll get Let's make a different color. There's an imaginary 2 right here. So with that, we want to get pairs of the prime numbers and pull them out. So we have pair of threes, pair of threes. So we can take those outside of the radical sign. So we can say three times three, which should equal nine. So the square root of 81 is nine, because nine times nine is 81, just like we showed here. Now when you're taking square root of fraction, that can be done by breaking it into sections here, by doing the top, taking the square root of the numerator and taking the square root of the denominator. So square root 25 divided by square root of 64. So with that, you can then, if you need to, you can break these down a little bit. So let's do that. Let's break them down a little bit. So if we take the square root of 25, well, y'all can probably see that we can say 5 times 5 is 25. So two fives. So we just take out one five for that one. So we know we should get five on top. And then let's do if we do the square root of 64. Well, you can break this down several ways. I'm going to do a little bit easier so it doesn't take up too much space, but you can just break it down by dividing by twos if you want to. If you all you can see is that it's an even ends in an even number, and so it's divisible by two, you can do it that way. But I'm going to say I know 8 times 8 is 64, which in that case should be our setup here. But let's see what we got. 
So we've got two times four to give you a there. We got two times four each a there. And then we can also break these fours down to twos. Sorry, I kind of drew that arrow on the. Looks like it's going on the two. But we can do. So I do that. So now, if we were to take this, we could simply say we have one pair of twos, two pair of twos. Three pair of twos. So the square root of 64, you're simply saying you have two times two times two, which is saying four times two, which equals eight. So the square root of 64 is eight. So therefore, our answer for this one, this is as low as you can go, is five over eight. Now, square root of negative 16. Square root of negative 16. Can we do this? Or taking the simply square roots of numbers and evaluating the square roots? No, because this negative, guys, this is not a real number. If you do this, then you come into getting imaginary values, and we'll get into that later. But with this, right now, if this is giving you a square root of a negative value, there is not a real number. I mean, it is not a real number, so no real number um, will give you an answer in the setup for it, okay? So, we can simply say, no solution. Alright. No solution. Okay, now I've got three problems for you guys to work on. Alright, for the next part of this, let's still find square roots of numbers. We're going to apply that to the order of operations. So hopefully you guys have heard of before or used the PEMDAS. Order of operations. So parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So that's the order in which case we can go. So let's start with parentheses. First off, right here, so we can simply take this and say 10 minus 5, and then 2 minus 5 should give us negative 3 squared, and then we should just write down the rest of the problem. Plus 6 divided by 3 plus square root, and I'm going to treat this square root as in parentheses as well. We're going to say 16 minus 7, so with that we should get a 9. Okay. Now the next one is exponents. Well, our only exponent is right here on this negative 3, so negative 3 squared. So then we should get 10 minus 5 and negative 3 squared, so negative 3 times a negative 3, if you remember from yesterday's lesson, a negative times a negative should give you a positive. So with that, we should get a positive 9. And then we're just going to write down the rest of the problem. Plus 6, divided by 3, plus... Well, so, so this is also calling an exponent, and reality wise the square root of 9 let's go ahead and do that as well so square root of 9 is if we break that down you can break that down pretty easily it's just a 3 times a 3 right 
So I got a pair of threes, so we know that that is a three. Okay. Now we've done parentheses, we did exponents, now let's do multiplication. And we can do division two at the same time. Just both those and get that knocked out. So we got 10 minus, and then 5 times 9 is what? Alright, hope you guys said 45. And then we've got plus. Then we got 6 divided by 3, which is 2, and then plus 3. Okay, so now we do addition and subtraction. So let's just go in order from which case it is written. So 10 minus 45 is a negative 35. Because if you're $45 in the hole and you get $10 back, well, you're still $35 in the hole, so you're negative $35. And then let's say plus 2 plus 3 is 5. And then for our last little setup here, we should be able to do this. So negative 35 plus 5. So your bank account says you have negative $35 and your friend gives you five bucks well then you should have still a negative 30 bucks in the bank All right. let's try it out okay so now on this one these solid straight bars the ends are absolute value signs. So in other words, anything that's in there should come out to be a positive value. So let's see what happens here. We're still going to use emboss, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. All right, so parentheses. Well, we can't do really anything else with this negative 3, then let's do with it, that's the exponent 1, we'll do that next. What we can do over here, as far as inside parentheses here, and I'll take care of the first step at least. So let's see, we've got absolute value of negative 3 cubed Plus, in parentheses here, we have 5 squared, so 25, 5 times 5 is 25, minus 3, that's the value sign, that's all over negative 15, divided by negative 3 times 2. Okay. Those are one little step there, but no big deal. We'll get this going. So let's go and knock out a couple steps on the top there. So now let's take care of that negative three cube. So with that, that's saying that you have negative three times negative three times negative three. Well, a negative times a negative, that's a positive, but then a positive times a negative makes it a negative. Okay, so I know I would get a negative value, and 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. So we should have a negative 27 plus 25 minus 3 should give us 22. That's also an absolute value. A little bit easier. Let's say negative 15 divided by negative 3. Well, a negative divided by a negative is going to give us a positive. 
So we should get 15 divided by 3 should give us a positive 5. And that's still times a positive 2. Alright. Let's recolor. Let's draw this up here. And then let's say we've got up top. We have negative 27 plus 22, so you're $27 in the hole, you get 22. So let's say you still have $5 in the hole in the absolute value sign. So negative 5 inside absolute value. And then we've got 5 times 2, which is 10. Okay, so this now because that absolute value is around that negative 5 that goes ahead and makes that a positive 5 over 10 and then you can reduce it right because 5 can go into 10 so if you were to Take 5 and divide by 5, you should get 1. And then 10 divided by 5 will give you 2. So your answer you should get is 1 half. Alright, and that's pretty much it for your simplifying square roots and applying that in the order of operations. So I've got two more problems for you to work on and I'll see you next time.